lives for me. He died. I came Oh, mercy, mercy, there was grace and grace was free. God and there was multiplied to me. It was there my bread and so from liberty. Supply to me, it was day my burden so from liberty. I cover by God's word at last. My sin I learned, then I tremble at the Lord's word till my guilty soul imploring turn to care. was free pardon there was multiplied to me it was there my burden so from liberty I came thank God for mercy mercy there was grace hallelujah pardon there was multiplied for it was there so from labor, oh, Praise the Lord. Yeah. Women, we serve. We serve as unto the Lord. Lord. Women, we minister. We minister as unto the Lord. We pray. Father, we thank you so much that we have come into your presence again today. We thank you for the opportunity to come and honor you in this sanctuary. Because what you did for us yesterday and the last Saturday when we came for rehearsals, Lord, you have a special place for women in your heart. Amen. We thank you that we are indeed the apple of your eye. Amen. And anyone who touches us indeed has touched the apple of your eye. Amen. We thank you that we are special and that we are, you are, we are unique in your eye. Amen. Well, today has been designated Mother's Day. Today is indeed a celebration of life. Because out of the womb of every woman comes life. New life, new hope, new restoration. Everybody who's breathing in this place must praise the Lord. Because indeed, you have been birthed out of the womb of a woman. We thank you for your presence in this sanctuary. We thank you that you've chosen living waters to be a place to rest your feet. We thank you for the powerful altar we have in this place. A powerful, powerful altar whose custodians are Papa Tony and Mama Rose. We thank you for the eagle's anointing that you have placed on them. We seek a sevenfold anointing of each of the seven spirits of God upon them. And as we desire ourselves to be in the eagle's anointing, Lord, we are also expectant that you will release upon us the 49-fold, the full measure of the sevenfold anointing. We thank you, Lord. We ask that you come and set your throne in this place today. That you would come down from heaven and you will sit in this place today. And that we will experience a manifestation like we've never seen before. Because no one who comes into your presence goes back the same. We pray for everybody in this church, Lord, that you would minister to them whatever burdens they have brought to you, Lord. They will set it down at your feet because at your feet, you do all things. You make impossible things become possible. We glorify your name because of who you are. And we thank you for this opportunity again to come before your throne of grace. We thank you that you indeed you have found in us a people who really can honor you. You call us true worshipers and for that, that is an honor for us. That you will consider us to be true worshipers. We bless your name. As we enter into time of praise and worship and thanksgiving, Lord, let us not lose sight of why we are here. We are here to exalt your name and to honor you and to praise you for who you are. We thank you for indeed you are God. Amen. Amen is your special day. Just be in the mood of prayer. Go in spirit, but God 
Lord, the one who is through us today, you will drink from the fountain and it is free. Just be in the mood of prayer. For God is looking for the true worshippers. We will worship God in truth and in spirit. Oh, 
singing his praises for what he has done for us throughout all the years. We give him all the praise and adoration. Amen. We thank him, Lord.
mountain. Hallelujah. Amen. We are women, women of God. Fulfill the law of Christ. Proverbs 31 10. A woman of noble character who can find. She is worth more than rubies. I am a woman of noble character. And I am worth more than rubies. Proverbs 31 27. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. I watch over the affairs of my household, and I am not idle. From this day forth, all women will call me blessed. Amen. Amen. All women will call us blessed. And we are blessed. Hallelujah. Women, you may take your seat. Amen. I will call on Sister Samata. And Sister Deborah to give us Bible reading. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for them. Hallelujah. Amen. Our scripture reading is taken from St. Matthew 20, verse 26 to 28, and St. Mark 10, verse 45. But it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. 
even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Amen. Women, we have entered a new season. This what you're seeing in Shallow Temple is a new season. And we are blessed. The Lord has blessed us. So anybody that is watching us right now that is looking for a church to go to, check out this Living Waters Assembly of God. There is a branch in Calgary. There is a branch in Edmonton. This is Shallow Temple. We have in Calgary, Robert Temple. If God is calling you, check one of us out. And if you are watching and it's international, check a Bible-based church. God is calling you. Women, this is the time to serve. And the anointing is upon us. And we have entered a new season with this eagle's anointing. This what you're seeing is a new thing. And now, my Bible reading is from the word of God, John chapter 9, verse 4. These are the words that Jesus spoke to us when he was here. And these words are true for us women today and to all the brethren that are watching us. So this is what the Lord Jesus is saying to us. I, this is John chapter 9, verse 4. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. And then the second verse, Jesus is saying to us in John chapter 6, verse 27. So this is what he's saying. So brethren and women, this is what Jesus is saying to us. Do not labor for food which perishes, but for food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. So just as God has set his seal on Jesus Christ, he has women in Shallow Temple and Rabot Temple. God has set his seal on us. Happy Mother's Day and Happy Women's Day to all women. I would like to call Sister Millicent to give us a song. Hallelujah! Oh 
mountain about all you have given me. Jesus, bring new world out of me. Jesus, bring new world out of me. Thank you, Sister Millicent, for that wonderful song. Jesus. And I will call on Sister Francie to give us a song for our offering. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I uh, just want to wish you happy Mother's Day, happy Women's Day. And you guys, you look very, very fantastic. Look beautiful. Amen. So the song, we all know that song is in Swahili. And I'm going to switch it in Lingala. It's just a short song. Yeah, all of you, you know it. Amen. Hakuna mungu kama wewe. 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 Hakuna mungu kama beautiful woman Amen. you are looking ravishing if I may say so myself okay. um, are we ready for some drama today we've prepared a piece called a virtuous woman who can find enjoy yes 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 the Gucci bags are in yes uh-huh and the matching shoes you make sure I get that you know I have to look Hot. Yes. Oh, don't worry about the money. My money, my husband got pay that. 5,000? Monkey money, that man. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, defendy. Send me a picture. WhatsApp me. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh huh. What else you have? Uh, yeah. 10,000? I tell you already, I have it. I have the money, yes. And I'm going to get it. Yeah. Okay, see you, see you. I got to go. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Ciao. Sandra, I haven't seen you in a long time. Oh, hello, Joy. You mean you haven't seen me since you started going to that church? Living waters, waters of living, whatever it's called. I'm sorry. It's just there's been so much activity happening at church. How's the family? Oh, the family is good, though. Except for that lazy, 
wretched goat of a husband that unambitious man I have at home. Sandra, you shouldn't talk about your husband like that. What has he done this time? Just the usual, being poor and wretched. <laughs> the man... <laughs> That man works hard. He has two jobs and works long hours for you and your family back home. Then he should get two more because that is not enough to maintain me. You don't see how hot I am? All of this needs maintenance. You can help him. Don't you work? Yes, so I work. But you know the national anthem for women now. My money is my money. His money is still my money. Oh, Sandra, Sandra. Yes, clothes, bag, shoes, they all cost money. But you see, not my money, his money. After all, he was the one that chased me down to marry to him. So that means he has to pay. Sandra, you have this all wrong, very wrong. Let me read you something. Proverbs 31.10 says, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband trusts in her that he will have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. And verse 16, she considers a field and hey, buys it. Are you finished? I don't need that preaching and Bible talk. This evangelist joy. We're supposed to help our men, not take advantage of them. <laughs> Ever since I started going to Living Waters, the teachings I've been getting have renewed my mind. You should come and hey, hey, Stop right there. You think I don't know how you guys behave over there all holy, holy and Jesus-like? You guys ain't holier than nobody. <sighs> all of this stress. I me mean, all stressed on me, that's shot, you know? But Sandra, aren't you a chorister at your church? Forget that. You still drink? That's a little anointing for the throat, you know? <laughs> Sorry, but I couldn't help but overhearing your conversation and all that you have been talking about. And you know what, my sister? You're right. Thank you. Thank you. Your money is your money. <laughs> you see? Listen, take it from me. Don't let no man sit on you. At all. For me, I was married for 20 years. You know what he did? Before we worked together, I shared my money. I shared my money. And you know what he did? He left me for another woman. Hey. <laughs> that could happen to me. And you know, that's not only that. He left me penniless. It is not my portion. So hear what? <laughs> Take it from me. Grab all you can grab. Save all you can save. Uh -huh. Have secret accounts. Yeah, hey, offshore banking. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Don't be stupid. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, this is my kind of woman. No, she makes sense. Let me tell you something. Stop quoting Proverbs 31 to me. In this day and age, that scripture is obsolete. No, my sisters, you have this wrong, very, very, very wrong. Remember the Proverbs 31 wife, the virtuous woman. See this momo? Hey, take your head out of the holy clouds. Nonsense. The Bible has caused women to suffer. That's what I said. Listen, virtue has gone through the door. It's gone. Hey. Common sense and entered in. She ain't had on. I know. Hey. 
The Bible says in Proverbs 12:4, the virtuous wife is like a crown to her husband, but a shameless wife is like rottenness to his bones. Oh, oh. Listen, joy. I say, he gon' pay, he gon' pay, he gon' pay until I am Sandra. I'm satisfied. I don't care where he had to go or what he has to do to get what I want. And if he don't have I want set for you in the house. Preach it, sister. Hey, learn from my mistake. That's it. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I have to get going right now. Bye bye. I'm inviting you to church. Please make time and come. In the meantime, I'm going to be praying for you, Amen. both of you. Okay, Mother Holy. Take care. See you. Mm. That's why she ain't had a man. I know. Eh? Yeah. So, so what you say? He left you. For another woman? That's all you hear? After 20 years, that couldn't help to me. Oh. No, let's go. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Excellent. We sure see a lot of Sandras in the world. Um, we are not running short of them, but we are running short of virtuous women. Um, a virtuous woman in God's sight is very precious. As women, as Sister Shanae wrote, she says, do you build your house wisely? Are your words gentle, kind? Are they affirming? Are they encouraging? And are they hopeful to others? Do you submit to that small, still voice whose whispers urge you to be still? To speak or not to speak? To go or not to go? To forgive and let go of past hurts? When to spend? and when not to spend? And what are you willing to sacrifice? Who are you willing to listen to? There are many wells of wisdom in this world, but a virtuous woman loves and follows the word of God. Just to name a few markings of a godly woman. <clears throat> she practices self-control. She cares for her household and is hospitable to others. She speaks with wisdom and kindness. She submits to her husband and is hardworking and sacrificial. And lastly, she is led by the word and not the world. Living waters, we are producing virtuous women. Thank you. At this time, I would like to call our sister to give us a song. Sister Carol. Hallelujah.
a little bit behind because I didn't want to add this to, uh, my, to the announcement because I really wanted it to be really special. Uh, for some of us who have been here for a number of years and some of us who have been here for one or how long that you have been here, you know that we do have a special mother. Amen? Are you guys saying amen for real? Amen. Amen. Mama Rose is a special mother to us. She has always been there for us. Amen. For some of us, we cannot even have time to explain what role she has played in the life of in our lives. I remember coming here and uh, the first dream I had that was I was very new in the church a couple of months and I had a dream that Mama removed the robe I had and gave me a new robe. Those days I didn't know what changing of cloth was and I remember her taking that garment I was wearing and she put it on a side and she gave me a new robe. Uh, I came with a lot of pain, a lot of debt, so many things that I cannot even talk about here. But over the years, that robe, I've seen what it meant. Because year after year, my life keeps changing. Amen. Year after year, my children keep growing in the fear of God. I came with my daughters. They never knew how to pray. I remember Ebenezer asking me one time, Mommy, why do we pray for food and give thanks to God? And he, yet we went to Superstore and bought the food. That's how behind Ebenezer was. She didn't understand why we could pray. But today, Ebenezer is not only a prayerful person, she's a prophetess. Amen. Amen. I thank God for my Mama Rose. So, Mommy, from the deep of my heart, I want to give you this special Mother's Day thanks. Thank you so much, Mommy, for being there. You know, for those people who know prayer and fasting, if you have ever tried to pray and fast, you know it's really, really hard to pray and fast in this country where there's food in the pantry, there's food everywhere. It takes so much grace for somebody to stay out of food to pray. It takes some special grace for you to stay out of food to pray for somebody else, not for you. And if you have ever been near Mommy, you know she's always talking of 
prayer. She was praying. You know, she's praying. She's not drinking water. She's not drinking tea. She's praying to a point you wonder, when does she ever eat, you know? And I know she doesn't talk about it, but she really seeks the Lord for us. And that's why, as we have stayed here, our life keeps changing. So we thank God for Mama Rose. Amen. We appreciate God for her. And as a year, as we mark 2019 Mother's Day, we know that the ego's anointing that has come on us has gone fast on her life. And we will watch as she moves to greater heights. We will watch as Mama moves to preach to many other people. I personally pray that God will give some other opportunity, some other women opportunities in different parts of the world to be able to sit under her and to be able to learn what we have learned. Amen. So therefore, mommy, we love you so much. And uh, at this moment, I am going to let uh, Brother Noble uh, to give uh, to give some speech and a, a gift to Mama. Thank you. To those who gave birth this year for the first child, we celebrate you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains, we appreciate you. To those who experienced loss through miscarriage, failed ado adoptions, or running away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes, prods, and tears, and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us for the foolish things we say. We don't mean to make things harder. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you. To those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who lived through driving tests, medical tests, and overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who are single, and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way you longed it for it to be. To those who are step parents, we walk with you these complex paths. To those who have envisioned lavishing love on grandchildren, yet the dream is not to be, we grieve with you. To those who are having emptier homes and nests in the upcoming year, we grieve and rejoice with you. To those who have placed children in adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and remember how you hold that child in your heart. To those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and of course our spiritual mom, uh, we need you. So Mama Rose, please step forward. <clears throat> I'm just going to read one uh, Bible verse, uh, and then we're going to present to you a little gift, token of appreciation. This is from 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 to 7. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. It is not proud. It is not conceited. Does not act foolishly. Is not selfish. Is not easily provoked or angered. Keeps no record of wrongs takes no pleasure in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things the way you do with us here at Living Waters. Amen. And I'll ask God tonight to step over here and uh, hand over to your Amen. token of appreciation some flowers. Thank you so much. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. Shall we all rise? It's time for the word of God. It is time to hear the word of God through our wonderful, powerful mama, the anointed woman of God, the only mother of living waters, take our seats. I'm very happy. It's Mother's Day. Another Women's Day. Hallelujah. And I thank God for all the beautiful women of Living Waters Assembly of God Church. Hallelujah. And I wish all the mothers and new mothers and old mothers happy Mother's Day. And the upcoming mothers a year by this time. Oh, my, my, my. Hallelujah. So I wish everybody a happy day. Amen. And on this special occasion also, I want to thank all the special women in the house who are really, really assisting me to do the work of God. I really appreciate you. Every leader needs people to support him or her. Hallelujah. And I thank God for the special people who have devoted themselves, families who have devoted themselves, just to make sure that the work of God in this house is going on well. God bless you so much. We appreciate you so much. Amen. Yes. And you are the reason why we keep doing the work of God. Amen. Because when you think of people who respect you, who, who are praying for you, who think they have been blessed 
by your ministry and they are there to assist you so others can also come and be blessed. You know, it helps you as a servant of God to continue to work for God. So I really appreciate all of you, especially some of you going the extra mile to support me. I really appreciate you. And your labor in Christ will never be in vain. Hallelujah. So I pray that the Lord will make everyone's joy complete in him. Amen. I was touched by the songs that the women sang today. Amen. Make me a vessel. Bring new wine out of me. What a powerful song. And the writer said, I came to this world with nothing. Hallelujah. And as women, we must always remember that. We came to this world with nothing. Everything will be left behind. Hallelujah. But we thank God that whatever we do for him is what will go ahead of us into eternity. Hallelujah. And... The second song, I love it because it's part of my message. Two women sent a message to Jesus to come because their brother was sick. Hallelujah. Today, I've titled our special message, Women Called to Exercise Great Faith. In Jesus Christ. It's our calling to exercise faith in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because the door to ministry was opened to us by Jesus Christ Himself. Hallelujah. And we are to exercise great faith in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And as we exercise great faith in Jesus, we bring miracles, not only into our lives, but into the lives of our families. Hallelujah. We open the door of blessings to our families. These two women, Mary and Martha, why would they send a message to Jesus to come, John 11? Because they believed that Jesus was God. They have worked with him. They cooked food for Jesus. Jesus felt free to eat their food. Hallelujah. And we know because the story is told of how one time Jesus was passing by their town. And he went into their home. And Martha ran to the kitchen quickly to cook. And I think the buffet was too big. So she wanted Mary to leave Jesus and come and help. But at that time, Jesus was sharing something so important. And Jesus wanted Martha to hear it. Hallelujah. So we know they cooked for Jesus. And Jesus ate their food. They believe in Jesus. So on this day, when their brother was dying, they had nobody to look up to than this same Jesus. And they sent a message to Jesus saying, come, because our brother whom you love is dying. Hallelujah. Amen. Such a great show of faith. In Jesus and Jesus delayed not because he didn't care but he wanted to wake up something to the glory of the father Amen. and this tells me that we also can be calling on to him and sometimes we think he's delaying is he not hearing us but he has heard us 
And he's always working out something for the glory of the Father in our lives and in our families and in our children's lives. And we are to behave just like what Mary and Martha did. They were not upset with Jesus. They kept waiting. Martha was the first to meet Jesus when he came on the scene. Please read quickly that scripture for us. From verse 3. Yes. Therefore the sister sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to, to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you. Are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke to his death. But they thought that he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sake that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Such a great a great confirmation of her faith in jesus if you had been here my brother would not have died but even now whatever you ask the father will give you meaning she had believed that jesus is the son of god most high hallelujah interesting conversation please continue jesus said to her your brother will rise again Martha said to him i know that will rise again in the resurrection at the last day Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives because in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Hallelujah. So it's not only Peter who said you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Martha did the same confession. He said, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come to this world. She believed that the brother will make it in the end, be resurrected, because the dead will be resurrected with Christ one day. But she was not thinking what Jesus was about to do, that he was going to resurrect him right away. Hallelujah. But she believed. And she was not upset with Jesus at all for delaying and letting their brother die. And so I'm speaking to every one of us women here. We should never be upset with our God at any point in time. Amen. We should continue to believe him at all times. You know that in that decision that will bring problem to the family. No, we Understanding, so please speak to him yourself. I do it all the time and it works all the time. So I'm giving you one of my secrets today. Just do that, and the Lord will just bring everything to pass for you. Hallelujah. You know, God did it for our mother Sarah. You know, it was her decision to give her maid servant to Abraham, and Abraham didn't refuse. 
Because apparently he liked it. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when the problem came, and she had a baby, and this woman was mocking, now Sarah says, send her away. He says, no. Hallelujah. God had to come in and say, listen to Sarah, send her away. Amen. Hallelujah. And that tells me God cares for us so much. He's our first husband. He cares for us. Even if you are not married, know that Jesus is your first husband. What he will do for you, even you get your that physical husband, he might not do it for you. Because he understands who we are. Because he molded us. He made us too complicated. So when ordinary men don't understand us, our husband, Jesus Christ, understands us. Amen. Hallelujah. So we have to exercise such great faith in him. Amen. You can't sleep because you are feeling lonely because you think you are not married. I'm telling you, it's not every time that you think married women are not lonely. Some married women are more lonely than some of you single people. Hallelujah. Because why? After some time, some men take the women for granted. Or they come and eat and eat the other one and then, oh, they are snoring. They are gone. Hallelujah. Because they are tired. They are thinking of work. They are thinking of other things. They don't care about the woman anymore. Hallelujah. But you know what? Jesus always cares. And if you will put your head on his shoulder instead of looking for a human man to put your head on, I'm telling you, you will not feel lonely. You will not feel sad because somebody's not giving you attention. We have a God who always wants to give us attention. We have a God we can always converse with. We have a God who is ready with us. That's why we say his name is Emmanuel. How do we call our Jesus? His name is Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. Hallelujah. God is with us. He comforts us. Amen. He takes away pain. He takes away sorrow. He takes away loneliness. Hallelujah. And he will make our lives to flourish. So let's learn to exercise great faith in this God. Hallelujah. And I pray that if you are married from today, let the marriage be renewed in Christ Jesus. And let not no man take their wife for granted. Hallelujah. Let every man learn to love their wives. Hallelujah, men. Hallelujah, men. Men, love your women. Hallelujah. Love women more and more. Love your wife. Hallelujah. Men, love your wives. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't just admire her outside, admire her inside too. Hallelujah. When she takes off the wig, admire her. When there's no makeup, admire even more. Hallelujah, man. So that is my prayer that in this year of celebration of women, married men here will love their wives more. Whether she's keeping her money to herself or not, love her. Love her. And men, you can also do the same. You go to God and say, God, this woman that I love is keeping her money like Sandra is doing to herself. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you know, God will go to her and say, hey, Give that money. And God will tell you what to do. And without asking, she will give you all the money. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So we are all to exercise great faith in Jesus. Amen. Martha said, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God who is to come. Hallelujah. And then we know the story of the woman with the issue of blood. Hallelujah. She believed so much in the power of Jesus to touch her. Bible says for 12 years she has been bleeding and she has suffered many things at the hands of doctors. Many things. They've run all kinds of tests. They've done all kinds of procedures. But when Jesus 
came to town. She purpose. No doctor can help. Be made. And women, you see, if you are determined to do something, nothing can stop you. Look at the crowd around Jesus. The twelve, making sure nobody comes in. She still managed to go through the crowd with all the pushing and everything. She looked at the target was to touch Jesus' garment. And she did touch that garment. And instantly, she was made whole. Jesus knew something had happened when nobody knew. Hallelujah. The disciples were like, what are you talking about? There are so many people pushing around you. But Jesus knew. Bible says she came forward trembling and said what had happened. And I like what Jesus told her. Your faith has made you whole. Hallelujah. Do you have that verse? Your faith. Your faith. Verse 48. Yes. Luke 8. Yes. And he said to her, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, women. Amen. Women, we serve. We serve us unto the Lord. We minister as what? Unto him alone. We are not looking at any human being but our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He said, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. And today the Lord Jesus is saying it to so many people who are here. So many daughters who are here. Your faith in him has made you well. Whatever you are looking for, your faith in him today has made you well. Therefore, you will leave today's service in peace. And you will leave for the rest of this year in peace. Till another Women's Day come, you will be in peace. Because you are exercising great faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Hallelujah. And that is why many women come here with so many issues. And they receive their healing. And they receive testimonies. Hallelujah. They receive. Matthew 9, 19 to 22, we won't read. But we see another woman exercising great faith. He said, Jesus, my daughter is demon possessed. I need healing for my daughter. The disciples were telling Jesus, send her away. She's crying after us. Maybe we should read that verse. It means she didn't stop. She didn't just say it one time and stop. She kept going after them. She knew this Jesus was able. And if you and I today continue to believe he is able, nothing will be impossible for us. Can you read that verse? While he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. So Jesus arose and followed him. No, no. Matthew 9. Is that Matthew 9? The woman, uh, oh, no, no, not Matthew 9. Matthew 15, sorry. Matthew 15 from 21. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Yes. And behold, a woman, a woman of Canaan came from crying to Jesus for all kinds of things. They are our husband's jobs, our husband's health, our children's school, scholarship. Sometimes we put ourselves always the last because we want to take care of everybody else. When everybody else is okay, then we come to ourselves. Hallelujah. The disciples say, send her away 
for she cries out after us so we must learn to continue to cry out unto jesus because he will never ignore a cry from a woman i'm repeating it he will never ignore a cry from a woman that's how dearly and deep he loves women hallelujah and that is why he took his time to minister to women he ministered to women he ministered to women Free some of them from being hunched back, being bent down, casting seven demons from some of them. You understand? One of them they wanted to stone. It takes two to commit adultery, but they brought only the woman. This woman is caught in adultery. Jesus started writing. Hallelujah. How can a woman alone cause adultery? Amen. Jesus freed that woman. He said, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. That's how much our master loves us. Amen. That's how much he loves us. And they are saying, send her away. She wouldn't go anywhere. She kept crying. Now listen, she didn't pay attention to what the disciples were saying. Because I'm sure they were already telling her, go away. Stop disturbing. She didn't pay attention to them. She kept looking at Jesus and crying, Lord, I need deliverance for my daughter. I need deliverance for my daughter. Don't look at somebody who is trying to push you away. Look to Master Jesus and him and him alone. Him alone. Don't let anything be a distractor to you. And what did Jesus say in reply? But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. She came and worshipped him. You see, even when Jesus spoke, Jesus didn't speak what she wants to hear. She was expected to say, go, your daughter is delivered. Because she must have heard testimonies of people. But Jesus said, I didn't come to you. Hallelujah. But rather she came, she worshipped him. And to worship somebody, you lie down. You are God. There is no one like you. I believe in you. You are the son of David. You are the one Isaiah prophesied over. You are the one who is to come. You are the redeemer of Israel. You are the redeemer of mankind. She worshipped him. And after that, she said, Lord, help me. Help me. Hallelujah. And after the conversation between them, Jesus said, I've never seen such great faith in Israel. That's what Jesus told this woman. I've never seen such great faith in Israel. Yes, read that verse for us. Then Thank Jesus you, answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. Hallelujah. Great is your faith. Where is the one that he said, I've never seen such great faith in Israel? Hallelujah. Such great faith is what women we are supposed to exercise. And you know, as we do that, there are many, many women and men out there that God will send to us here that our great faith in him will also bring them the deliverance the healing the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen. hallelujah did you find it hallelujah it's okay amen we are called to exercise great faith amen and today I have a woman here. Her testimony is so great. And for me, it tells me how much pain and suffering women can take. Hallelujah. You see somebody and you never know the pain they are going through unless they tell you. And yet they believe God has brought them to Shiloh Temple for their blessing. So they continue 
from shoulder to feet. So my first prayer was for God who has shown me to break her chains and to rebuke the spirit of depression. For me, I like Jesus himself to tell me by his spirit what people are going through. Because sometimes if you talk to me and the Holy Spirit directs me in a way, you would think because you told me something. So if you know me, I don't like to entertain too much of your story. I don't want to hear it. I want to hear it from the Lord and how he tells me to deal with it. But I didn't know she was going through even more. There was a day somewhere February the Lord told me make this woman your burden. I want you to show her love. She doesn't know I'm speaking this for the first time this February. I want you to show her as much love as you can because she's here for a purpose. So I started reaching out to her more. Though I never asked her what you are going through, you know, every now and then we talk about job or something, but not going deeper into her life story. Hallelujah. And when she gave me her testimony last week, I now know why God told me, show her extra love. Because some people have gone through so much the bad side of life. At this time, I will call on our men for their presentation. Hallelujah. Men, action. the Lord. On behalf of the men of living waters, you, our women, our wives, we want to tell you how much we love and appreciate you. You are much more beautiful than these roses we are holding in our hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, when you look at the rose, you see the beauty of it. When God, when God created the world, he had you in mind. To come and beautify the lives of every man, we are grateful for whom you are. We are grateful for your support how you supported us or how you are supporting us, how you are holding our back. There's, our words is not enough to say how much we appreciate you, women. You know, uh, a few, few minutes ago, somebody was reading so many things, you know, how women are so important. See, I would just say maybe one or two. Sometimes you see a man, he could be like maybe six feet or seven or, or five feet, or he could be a macho man, or he could be of any stature. But the truth is, without you, we are nobody. We are nobody. The, 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 you could be a president of a country. But there's a woman that takes care of you at home, that watches over what you eat, what you wear, where you go, who you associate, who you are associated with. These are the roles of women that nobody sees. For this, we say thank you. We appreciate you. So, once again, on behalf of Men of Living Waters, we we want to present this rose. You see, this is the first time we are doing this, but. Um, if you don't mind, women, can you please stand up? Every woman, stand up, please. Our men, we are going to, 
you know, just give you one, one piece of our love. Hallelujah. Please, if you can, just keep, walk your way forward and uh, just, you know. Yeah, no, the executive and mama will be the last because we have it and for that presentation we are going to make. So all the executive, you can come and stand by, support the women. But every woman, please come. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Thank you for being our, our wife. Thank you for keeping, putting up with our, our mess. Thank you for putting up with our troubles. Thank you for putting up with our, our deficiencies, our incapabilities. You keep up with all these. We are grateful. Thank you for being our wives. Thank you for being our women. God bless you. Continue to be the good woman, the good woman you are. You are vitious. much love in our in our in our basket we still have much roses so if if you have not gotten one please come come forward come forward hallelujah so can we have the the women executive please come forward now Almighty God to continue to that grants you the unlimited wisdom with which you lead not only the women, the entire church with our Papa. We are grateful. May God continue to bless you. May your, may, 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 may your revelation, the where it comes from, from God, may it never cease. May it continue to flow so that you're going to lead this great crowd of people, hundreds of people. Edmonton, Calgary, Edmonton, Canada, and worldwide. May God continue to lead you. May God continue to bless you. And the executive that ran you, our women, we are grateful. We are really, really grateful. God richly bless you. So on behalf of our, our men again, we want to present this special, special rose. We know you are rose, but this we have we have a special rose what we have made for this occasion. Hallelujah. And and uh, we, and we also have a beautiful just a little token to add to this uh, this bouquet of roses for the women department. Whatever suits you, you can do with it. Hallelujah. You can take a flight even to Israel. You can go anywhere. Hallelujah. So on behalf of the men, God bless you, Mama, to the women executive. So we can never.
never, never be thankful enough. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. God bless you, Mom. Yeah, we gave them before. We can give you double again because we have enough. Applause for our women. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Men, Asho, thank you very much. God bless you. another year of celebration of our Women's Day. From the year of world manifestation to a new year of victory prophesied by our Father of the House. Yeah. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. As you've heard from John 6, 27, women do not work for the food that will perish, but for the food which endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man giveth to you all. Labor while it is day, for salvation, glory, and power belongs to our God. Amen. Trial times will come. But continue to trust and hold on to God's holy hand. This makes us stronger and stronger and stronger. God will never leave us. Neither will he forsake us. For he cares. When we had rehearsal these few Saturdays, we knew what God did. We came for rehearsal, but we were touched by the Lord. As our sisters always said, the altar speaks because we always come to our Mount Zion. Our labor in the Lord will not go in vain because from victory unto victory, his army shall he lead till every foe is vanquished for Christ is Lord indeed. Remember the women of old, Mary Magdalene, Salome, Esther, Ruth, and some other women. They serve the Lord with all diligence and faithfulness. As we serve, our most important lifelong relationship is to be with God. 
acknowledging our thoughts, be nicer to ourselves. Let's put God first. Let us love our neighbors as ourselves. Let us take care of our basic needs. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Let us trust in the Lord. For he will direct our paths. Whatever we ask of him. If we believe. According to the sermon from our pastor Rose. If we believe. Like that woman whose son was dead. If we believe. Like the woman of the issue of blood. If we believe. God. Will give us our heart's desire. Once again, I want to say congratulations first to our pastor, Rose, for being there for us. Mama, you're more than a mother. You're more than a mother. We just thank God for your life. You're a sister to us. She rebukes us. Oh, yes, yeah, she does. But she does it because she wants to see us grow and improve in our lives and in our different aspects of work. So to the, all the women of the church, our visiting women, I want to say congratulations to you as this is Mother's Day all over the world. I want to say to the women who are still waiting, who are still believing God, that next year by this time, it will be well Amen. as it is well in Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations once again. Amen. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Blessed Women's Day to you all. Amen. 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 Thank you. Take my field. Thank you, President. Hallelujah. At this time. I will have to call our, our sister Carol for a vote of thanks. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for her, please. Hallelujah. In light of this testimony today, I am missing my daddy of the house. We needed him here today. And... <laughs> It's hard. It's really hard. Anyway, uh, we will do it, Mama. Uh, on behalf of the women's ministry, I would like to say a heartfelt thanks to Pastor Tony. This man has been a rock. He's been a rock. Oh, <laughs> and Mama Rose for standing beside him. And being a mother to us all, the spiritual parents that you are to us, it's, it's amazing, it's incredible. I've never found it anywhere else. Where else can you find pastors that you don't have to make appointments to meet with when you're in a situation? But today I would like to say thank you for following the vision to open this church living waters. Ah. Our president, sister patients, auntie patients, I would like to say thank you for all what you have done to make today possible. Thank you for organizing your executives and to them I say a heartfelt thank you. Today was amazing, was amazing. Um, to our visitors, whoever's visiting us today, thank you for being here and thank you for sharing your day with us. Um, to the women, Auntie Mary, our MC, Sister Millicent, um, Auntie Gloria, I don't know where she disappeared to, but to everybody who made today possible, thank you, thank you, thank you. So on behalf of the Women's Ministry again, I would like to say thank you to everybody for being here. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I will call Pastor Rose for the benediction, we want to appreciate 
the musicians, they are be with us for the rehearsals and all. God bless you. We want to see more of you next year. Amen. So I will call a Pastor Rose for benediction. Hallelujah. Shall we all rise, please? Hallelujah. We thank God for bringing us this far. Amen. And I'm very happy because you are happy. Amen. And we all go there and sit and chat and relax and enjoy the afternoon. Hallelujah. Thank you to our men for the nice roses. They've done it before many years ago. I think it was 2012 or 2013. It's been a long time we got roses, and today we've got roses. We need more roses. Even after church this afternoon, we need roses. We need roses for the rest of the year. Hallelujah. So all the men watching us out there, remember your woman needs a rose. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for a wonderful service. You began with us and you are ending with us. And Lord, we know you are even going to sit and dine with us. Therefore, we give you all the glory. Father, you have spoken to us today. We all must exercise great faith in you. And you are rebuilding all the old rooms. Lord, we thank you. We shall be called the planting of the Lord trees of righteousness to the glory of the Father. Make everyone's joy complete in you and continue to help us never to give up but to continue. In this family, we are family. Things happen in families but we don't cease to be being part of our families. So nothing will make us cease from being part of this Living Waters family. Will continue to be family. And on that day, when the roll call comes forth, and living water, Shiloh Temple is called, we shall all be gathered with all those who come after us in your presence. Shine your face on your people, ever now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.